the suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! I got really fucked! Women, one douchebag! Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's go! Do it. <laughs> Our Jared Freed impression. Welcome back to a, the last episode of Stone Depetite Before We Take to the Skies. With your host, as always, it's me, Kip. And we are on Zoom. And we're going to be on Zoom for the next couple of weeks because I love seeing Eve hate us through the cameras of our t- computers. But also because we will be jet setting over the next couple of weeks, which is exactly what we were going to talk about. We want to ask some help from the community. We also want to kind of give you all a little bit of insight into what's going on with the world. I think we teased it in the last episode. I don't know if you've included it or not, but with Chris starting to do wedding preparation, I think the community would like to listen and hear a little bit more about the trials and tribulations, headaches that you may occur, or like the avenues you find to be the best, I guess, route for you and your uh, your bride to be. So, in between that, and uh, we got a little business travels across the pond. We've got a kick ass episode, and don't forget, we also have True Detective episode recaps. I think the world is starting to side with me instead of Eve as more folks watch episode four. But before we dive into that we would be remiss. It's tax season. Everyone should have their W-2s, W-9s, 1099 paperwork, and everything under the sun. If you work as a small to medium-sized business, maybe you are a one-man show. Maybe you are a contractor for a multitude of different industries or businesses. Whatever the occasion or situation your work is, our friends over at Seed Money Consulting, Denver-based accounting and tax firm are here to help. We've said it time after time, don't leave money on the table. Let's stop giving interest-free loans to a government that continues to spend with reckless regard. The best way to do that is to take control of your own finances. That's why we're excited that we work with Seed Money Consulting because I know that we don't have to lose sleep if we, in case, left a nickel on the table. They're going to make sure every box is checked, every I is dotted, and every T is crossed. They will do the same for you as they have done for us and many others in the Colorado community. No matter your industry, no matter what 2023 brought for you, Seed Money Consulting can help you when you file your taxes. Reach out to them. You can find them at seedmoneyconsulting.com or, you know, press the button above. Tommy will come back there with a tack hammer and you could just fucking Google it to figure out more. Our boy Sam and Shahab will be there for you just as they've been there for us and a lot of our friends from the restaurant industry, the cannabis space, content creators that may have gotten paid a 500 here, a thousand here, a 2000 here. They are here to help you and to make sure that you cover all of your basis. So reach out to the team over at Seed Money Consulting. You'll be hearing about them from now until April 15th, at which time they'll probably, uh, you know, just go back into normal accounting instead of tax and accounting. But we love them and we love working with them. They're great people and uh, they're always looking out for us. All right, let's dive into it. I want to start with Eve. Now that you're caught up with True Detective, Chris is up to speed. Give us your takes on the season. I'm liking it. I don't think it's too slow. I'm I'm in. I'm all for it. Okay, well, I, fuck you, Chris. What about you? I think uh, Eve and I here are the team to beat. I think we're both all in. Really? Damn. Oh. Eve, I just you find know it- this. I had already mentioned, like, I don't mind the slow story development. I like the characters and seeing what's going on. And I feel like it's really starting to build up because now you're getting a sense of uh, I'm terrible with characters' names, um, but uh, Jody Foster. I, no, not Jody Foster's character, but the guy's um, dad. The oh uh, yeah, the the sheriff the that was in Eastbound and Down. Yeah, yeah, 
like he's like there's some issues going on there and and he definitely did some mishandling of some cases back in the days um so i feel like that's gonna come out because I feel like that dude had some deep issues. If he was like trying to get this mail order bride type situation going on. Yeah. That seems like such the oddest, like offshoot of a plot. It's like, Oh, this guy can't fuck anybody in this town. So he's got an online girlfriend. She goes to another school, Chris, find a new slant. Which we saw uh, that. You saw that coming really early, right? Like I knew it was yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if yeah. I had to guess, she's probably not real. And it's like a Nigerian prince. Yeah, no, it's, it's like some a dude. Taya situation. Yeah, it's definitely a <laughs> Manti Teo situation for sure. No, I just wish we got a little bit more. Obviously, like we talked about, uh, Eve, you and I, without alluding to too much, the uh, person coming out of the coma, that was like the only part that was like grappling, I felt like, recently. Like, otherwise, it feels like it's a very slow burn. And when they do these slow burns, I feel like they for, they just leave so much undone at the end. Well, but like what's going on now with the, uh, you know, when they went out to that boat to try and find that one like big Fisher motherfucker guy. And they found that old scientist that's obviously a heroin addict. But, but his eyes were burned yeah. out. I think we're like, starting to see a little bit of that, like, not in this world type stuff. You know, I'm not going to say aliens, but that extra presence, like the guy coming out of the, you know, in the coma and out of the coma, but also those underlying tones. I think that guy's in that same realm. I don't know. I didn't catch heroin as quickly, but it may be the case. They, and the they showed needles. They showed needles on the ground. Oh, they did? They okay. cut to yeah. it really quick, but. And and the the uh, the polar bear that Jody Foster finally encountered. Yeah, and she just, like, runs off the road, and then a polar bear's like, hey, you want a Coca-Cola? Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, it feels like, obviously, I'm sure there's some underlying tones or, like, there's a metaphor for it. Like, well, they, the way early on in the series, that old lady followed that dead guy, Ian or whatever, and she's like, yeah, he's dead. So, obviously, we're already, like, they set you up that this is a world where... No, spirits I, are I, around and all that so i don't know why you're surprised like i'm so just I'm, I'm here for the I'm ride i'm actually really interested in the old lady character because number one that christmas spread she had out that was a lot of work and that looked fantastic so the woman is obviously cool on that note like <laughs> she was a professor and a big scientist and apparently you know she was saying about how she pushed boundaries and you know, so I'm wondering how much, like, if her scientific work or, if, like, what she was in is in some of this research type stuff. Like, if she yeah, had... I think they're all definitely connected. Like, the obviously, the, the scientific center is a, a direct correlation. But, yeah, it seems like, you know, with the uh, the lights flickering and they're like, we let her out. There's a lot of stuff brewing. But I'm afraid that they're doing they're going so slow in the first half that they're going to end up never actually closing. Uh, like there's just going to be these fucking plot holes at the end. And while they usually are known for leaving a lot of things unanswered, it's going to end up being where there's too many things, too many untied results. And so I, I just I'm losing faith in the series itself. Well, do you know how many episodes it's supposed to be? Like, Let's is it it's supposed to be like eight? eight? Yeah, eight, nine, really? Eight. Uh, see eve see no but like you're losing faith so early like why don't you just wait to be disappointed until the end so, but at, so until that be, point have faith we it's like be. if your dad walks out for cigarettes three times and he doesn't come back for six months why am i going to believe that on the fourth time he's actually coming right back from the grocery he's not then why did you and, even watch this season the same reason i watched fucking the bachelor it's because i have nothing else to do at night <laughs> watch Grey's anatomy I would rather cut my fingers off. Kip, you watch The Bachelor. I think you would actually genuinely enjoy Grey's Anatomy. Oh, I'm, I'm not even joking. I used to Did work in really healthcare. Watch... Well, Are you a consistent watcher of Grey's? I mean, I stopped pretty much once Yang left because I was like, there is no Grey's Anatomy without Yang. And it does get really bad. Uh, but you so... have a good, you have like a solid eight seasons, Kip. I think you would, you'd have to at least watch the first episode. 
Come on. I think you would enjoy Grey's Anatomy. The shit you watch. Come on. I watched some of the first few seasons. It's not a, it's a, I mean, the woman who wrote it's one of the greatest TV writers of all. I mean, she writes bangers. Aaron so. Sorkin. And San, uh -huh. Is it Sandra Pro? Oh? <laughs> Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes, that's what it is. No, but anyways, also, Curb Your Enthusiasm's back. It is back. It is. And it's, I mean, I heard a Larry David podcast. He's been doing his media tour as he chokes out Elmo and hits up all the morning shows. I mean, he's he's sincere with this being his final run with the show. He's going to just go golf and chill. So respect to him, but at the same time, damn, that sucks. The first he really, great. He's so fucking funny, man. And uh, that show is great. I'm going to probably let that one stew for a couple episodes so I can have a few of them in the bank. But, I mean, this is a perfect segue into our next talk conversation points. Chris, we're both about to be on a plane for a couple hours at a time. And yeah. where are you going and what are you doing? So we are going to Santa Barbara for Steph's birthday. And also, it's perfect because we're also going to do some some wedding stuff. So we'll fly into Santa Barbara tomorrow, hang out in Santa Barbara, and then we'll kind of drive out to uh, the area where we'll be getting married, like Santinez Valley and that area, Los Olivos and all that. So yeah, we're going to go uh, tomorrow. We'll just go in and we might grab this, grab a bite at this place called Industrial Eats. I'll let you know about that afterwards. Um, but that's going to be more casual. And we'll do like, we'll stop by and do like a little wine tasting. Keep it casual tomorrow night. And then Friday night, we're going to go. Um, Friday, we're going to go to some vineyards, go to some wine tasting, scope out the place. She obviously knows it, but I don't. This is my first trip out there. So I'm super excited. The weather looks like it's kind of coming around um but yeah and then Friday so is it night, not flooding in that area like i've seen that it's just been getting dumped on by that like linear line of just tons of run is santa yeah. barbara in that vein no yeah there's definitely parts that were flooded and stuff but apparently like it's pretty much cleaned up and a lot of the roads are open back up but i guess there there might be some like kind of county roads things like that when you get out in the valley that are so close. I'm talking like I know this, but I have no fucking clue. Just reach out there. to our friend Guy Fieri and see what he's up to. You know, he's a Santa Bee boy himself. Yeah, I just listen for lingo when like Steph talks with her family to pick up on how they talk about the area. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, like oh off that road. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, so I'm trying to pick up on that and just regurgitate that. So okay. for those that haven't been to Santa Barbara or don't have the lay of the land like the uh, Steph's family may have, what would a comparison be like us and be like, yeah, go down Larimer and take a ride on 34th. Is that kind of how they say it? And they're like, oh, I know that restaurant. No, I think there's like roads, like main like roads that go down like kind of like a main road in the valley where if you go up this road, you'll hit, you know, different vineyards along that road and areas that like that. I hate that for you. You're going to have a blast. Yeah, we're going to go uh, Friday night. Her birthday is Saturday, but we're going to go um, out to eat Friday night. We're doing a really nice dinner at this restaurant called Bell's. Um, okay. so we're doing like a tasting. It's like a Michelin restaurant. So we're I'm excited about that. Um, Eve, how do you think this is going to go for us in the content game? Do you think he's going to even have salvageable pictures? Or do you think he's going to be shaking like Michael J. Fox and we're going to get the usuals? I don't know. I think he's going to try a little harder. But he also might be too busy just like enjoying Santa Barbara for the first time because it is beautiful. Yeah, I've been there, guys, but don't ask me. You know, I only lived in Los Angeles. Anyway. Well, you, you, you can I, I, No, it's fine. You got Steph. No, no, no. I'll just go fuck myself. It's fine. You don't need to hear about it from me. Yeah, Chris, that's really fucked up. Why don't you ask Eve, who has the lay of the land, where you should be going? I've never been to anywhere in that well, region. I was so giving, this is all I was giving, to me. I was kind of giving my kind of plan, my approach, and then I was going <laughs> to open it up. Not sure. sure. Another thing. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to get like <laughs> we're going to do like a classic like tri tip, uh, California barbecue style out there in the valley, something casual. Um, and then Saturday we're meeting our like wedding people, event people at the wedding venue. So we'll get to see what it looks like. Eve, what uh, should he be expecting? Like 
does he need to pack a collared shirt or can he just wear his REI threads that he always has? I mean, people wear what they want at vineyards, but I, I mean, it's really, it's Steph's call. Honestly, she should be telling him what she wants him to wear. Cause some people dress a little snazzier for that, but I've what seen if someone's people about to like over eat, drink on Rose. Like what's the behavior vibe? Is it casual? You should know better than us. I'm just curious. Sure. Wear some board shorts and a button up. <laughs> Couple bands and a uh, Faraday sweatshirt. There you go. Yeah. No. Okay. So, Eve, give us the rundown. If you were here, you know, staking your flag in the ground that, like, oh fuck, I know all about Santa Barbara. No, I'm not saying I know all about it, but I've been there because also okay. it, well, it's a couple hours favorite, from Los Angeles. What was your favorite thing about it? Jesus Christ. It's very beautiful. Cool. Swanky. Okay. Hip could have added that to the conversation. <laughs> Well, so Eve, you didn't ask before. And also, like, Eve Steph is... The, I'm not... Santa Barbara, nothing to report. Sweet. Okay. After you I won't finish my Eve thought. For... No, no, no. I won't finish my thought. Not... It's fine. After, after you jump on me for not including you in the conversation, and then I ask you about Santa Barbara, and you're like, it's beautiful. I was thinking about it, because I was trying to think of all the stuff I did there, but the vineyards are nice. It's beautiful. It's swanky. It's a rich town. You'll enjoy what it. you like the most? I didn't go specifically to a vineyard. You drive cool. by them. You're I'm not a wine a person. Tangible not like you need me. You have fucking Steph who like knows that area a lot more. I'm not claiming no more than her, but it's just interesting. You're not like Eve. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I've been there. But I whatever. Mean, but that's like, I mean, what if I, you know, I would expect. You'll hate it, Chris. I... There you go. You'll fucking hate it. Okay. Well, I would expect if you're like, ooh, ask me, ask me. I've been there. <laughs> No, I didn't say like, ask me. I said, okay, don't ask me. Don't okay. think about me. Whatever. That's what I was saying. Yeah, well, I did think about you, but then you added right. you added absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, I love y'all. Do you so know much. have you have you did you go to the funk zone? No, I don't even know what that is. Oh god, uh, huh? Is that a sneeze? <laughs> oh. That was a sneeze from me. What's the funk zone, Chris? Oh, this place in Santa Barbara, Steph was talking about. It's kind of like this cool little area. They got murals and stuff, and there's this one. Uh, what's it called? I think it's called the Valley Project, and it's like this kind of wine tasting room. Um, but yeah, I figured Eve would know she's been there, but <laughs> not to the vineyards. Well, I mean, Chris, it sounds like y'all are going to have a lot of fun. Um, as we kind of teased earlier, you know, we want to hear more about the trials and tribulations of having to, you know, schedule and plan a wedding. You know, what should somebody expect? You know, like, you know, the dining aspects. I know you and I discussed it previously, whether it's like, do you want to do a sit down? Do you want to do buffet? Would you want to do a food truck and keep it casual? Right. Like, you know, what do you expect after you get back from, Santa Barbara will kind of have a little bit more lay of the land in terms of like, what do we need to pack for this wedding? Should Eve wear a dress or is she okay just going in a robe? You know, things like that. And we will do a side bet. Will Steph or will Chris have better pictures from the Michelin star dining experience and who better captured the weekend in Santa Barbara through footage better. And Eve and I will be the judge of that and we'll discuss it next week. I think that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I mean, this is no way it backfires. No, not a chance. I'm obviously going to come home with the gold. Um, <laughs> Eve, don't look so... Don't look this like this has been decided. She's so... Oh, it's decided. Eve cannot be impartial. Yes, she can. We uh, she's, That's why we hired her, is to be third chair and be the split between our indecisions. So, Eve, as I said, you're my favorite, and I hope that you can come with a very unbiased opinion when we sort through the photos from Santa Barbara this weekend. Yeah. Wait, is Steph's family meeting you there, or it's just the two of you? No, it's just the two of us. Okay. And we're so, Steph is going to... Here's what I'm going to say. Steph is going to take better pictures, because she's been taking pictures and stuff and sending it to, like, her mom, whoever, her girlfriends. So, she's going to be taking better pictures just in general, and more pictures... I think because you just pay attention to that she's gonna be like, Oh, look at these flowers. Look at this view. This is where we're going to get married. So that's why I think she's going to do a better job. You don't think I'm going to send those pics to my guy friends. No, I don't. 
maybe a couple. The you littlest one little. I drank, bro. <laughs> you know very little of our guy relationships. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, Chris, she listens to CityCast. I'm sure she knows all about the weed bro culture, so it's not a big deal. But at the same time, I'm, I'm excited. Much glass of flex on y'all when I get back. Yeah, oh, you're gonna you're gonna be right as rain. You're gonna come back, and everyone's gonna be so proud of you. I can't wait to see these pictures. Um, but you know, next Tuesday we will be on Zoom again because, as you jet set, I am as well. I'm doing a work trip in Portugal for the next week or two. Um, what you doing over there? So we don't want to tip our hand too much, but we're going to create a company and brand in Europe. As y'all have seen us talk about in the past, whether it's the green wave hitting Europe, whether it's our travels over there and the fact that we kind of align better culturally with them as we are kings of the third place. We want to find a place that we feel would be uh, fruitful for our business ventures. And so we're going over to Portugal to scout locations for a possible business. Um, we're teaming up with some folks from the hospitality industry, both here in Colorado and around the globe. Um, it's a project that's been in the works for about nine months. Um, and it's finally starting to grow some legs. I'm gonna fly over to Portugal on Friday. So as you're listening to this, I'll be somewhere, not here. And I have no clue exactly where, but um, we're gonna bip and bop me and uh, some folks. We'll bip and bop across the country of Portugal to uh, look and kind of just size up what the culture, the cuisine, and the industry looks like. Obviously, all drugs have been decriminalized in Portugal, but things like cannabis and other aspects are not legal. Germany is about to have the first, I guess, shoe fall in Europe outside of places like Malta. But like the first true larger constituent um, of the EU is about to legalize cannabis in some form or facet. It looks like they're going to actually be a proponent of more home grow and uh, consumption juxtaposed to recreational retail. But, you know, there's a lot of moving parts for them. And as the industry continues to change and evolve across the globe, Germany will be no different. We've seen we've heard rumors that places like Croatia would kind of follow suit because they see it as a cash cow crop. And we also understand that, um, you know, with Portugal being fairly progressive and everything that they kind of do on their own, that if, you know, it becomes legalized in the surrounding areas, that we feel that there could be a reason and a belief that it will, in fact, be legalized in the coming years, you know. So it's obviously, again, a slow burn, but this is the first step in that process. And we've done some scouting with folks both from Denver and uh, Europe, folks in Lisbon as well, um, all of those things. So it's going to be really cool. I don't have a lot to report now because we don't want to tip our hand in case, you know, maybe it's just not the proper fit or maybe we don't fall in love with the properties that we've looked at or like the concepts or we meet with the chefs. But we're going to do some really cool stuff. And so while you and I are both dipping and bopping, we also have a lot of stuff going on here. Eve will be boots on the ground. So like the coverage will remain the same. We'll talk about the best things we ate over the weekend. Eve, you'll probably lose that bet next week, seeing as Chris <laughs> is eating in a Michelin star restaurant. But, you know, we're the podcast will still go on as normal. But, yeah, we're looking to, like, expand the empire. We've started to see growth in our page, our podcast listeners, as well as the relationships that we've built and fostered through uh, being genuine and not just sucking the dick of any fucking person that gives us free tacos or a margarita, whatever that dude is in the podcast or in the social media world here in Denver with the glasses. That guy sucks. Um, but either way, we're trying to do things a little differently. And a lot of that has to do with ingratiating ourselves with communities and industries and cultures and so i'm going to go over there and try to foster some relationships for us but we will be doing the podcast this is by no means a fully leisure trip so with them being six hours ahead we'll still do five o'clock they'll just be 11 o'clock my time so i'll eat a nice little you know sativa edible at supper so that we do those late night dinners as the euros always do and i'll be ready to rock at 11 p.m every Monday and Wednesday until I get back. So um, that kind of covers what I'm going to be doing, what you're going to be doing. Eve, 
what can we expect from you on the home front? Please, Are you doing give, anything? please give me, please give us something good. I'm dying for like a five minute monologue of just. I'm, your- I'm not gonna lie. When she did the uh, the Jackass Festival up in Leadville, the Mule Races, Bureau fe- I Bureau thought, Fest, Bureau Fest, I thought that was some of your best work yet because you were doing something that not a lot of folks either knew or recognized. And it was very fun to hear about doing things off the beaten path. So if you have something like that, we would love to hear about it. If you do not, lie and just tell us you do. <laughs> Make up a really cool weekend. But would have no photographic are evidence you, and just be like, you have to trust me. Yeah. That's what we've been okay. doing with Chris for four and a half fucking years. <laughs> well, it might snow on Saturday. So I'm kind of, I don't know. It depends how bad it is. Do you have any Super Bowl plans? Are you going to watch the sports ball? I didn't even know the Super Bowl was happening until today. <laughs> I fucking love you. I love that you're I just have like, no idea. Yeah, we have a social media page. We have, a, we're very in tune with what's going on in the world. No, I did not know the biggest sporting event in the country. First of all, I've never said that. And also, I've been very transparent and I don't give a fuck about football. So why would I? That's your that's your field. That's your lane, Kip. That's you and Chris. Football. Are you going to go to a hockey game this weekend? Don't give a fuck about football. You've heard about T Swift. And somehow, if you've heard about T Swift, then you've heard about the Super Bowl. No, because I knew the Chiefs won a game. But I didn't, I didn't think I didn't connect it to like oh they're they're in the Super Bowl right like I don't know yeah. okay there you go There's I don't know who they're playing play. no worries that's totally okay they're playing against the San Francisco 49ers just a stone's throw from your former residence in L A <laughs> not far from Chris's future home of Santa Barb um, it's very far at, from Santa Barbara okay calm down Miss California <laughs> fucking 2020. Uh. She's got. She knows the distance, Chris, but she doesn't have any good insight. So we'll just take that for what yeah. it's worth. <laughs> okay, so here's a quick question before we go. Mr. B's has been showcasing all the great places around Colorado or around Denver that you can load up on dank snacks and beer for the big game. If there was one thing that you see this on your Super Bowl spread, you walk into a party – and you like if you see celery and ranch, you're like, yeah, this party's gonna suck ass. Or maybe somebody cuts their own hair. You know that nobody cares about the game. What's that one dish? If you see it on the spread, you're like, oh, these people mean business. Because I'm thinking mine's probably like a pig in a blanket. You know, I love pigs and blankets. But also, if you have a good spread of like blue pan or king of wings, that'll do you fancy real nice. What's your guilty pleasure? Like, you don't give a shit about the game as long as this food is on the table. I'll start with the E. I, I mean, yeah. If they do any, they don't have to do takeout, but like you said, wings, pizza, like mac and cheese. I just like a lot of food. Mm. So just all of it, just all the bad food. The and wide all, variety, a yeah, little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, like cheese dip, whatever. Anything I can stuff my face with, I don't care. So, All of it. It yeah. That sounds pretty good to me. Chris, what would your go to be? Like something that means I don't even give a shit if the game is a score a good score or a bad one. They've got this. And that's all that well, matters. Yeah. First of all, I'm gonna say Super Bowl parties need to be a mix match of takeout and you know, people homemade. homemade. Yeah, I agree. Because and there's some I things that it's best thing, to leave to the professionals, you know? Yeah, the one thing that can really kick up a party is if somebody has, like, really good white queso. If somebody's got a white queso dip, I think that just, it, it really does transcend all other dips. If it's a good, if it's a fucking good white queso dip, watching a football game, and it's got to be a big, it's got to, there's got to be a lot of it, because that shit goes quick. Yeah, and you need to be able to reheat it every 30 minutes if you don't have one of the uh, burners underneath, like the catering burners, because it does congeal, and you'll need a quick yeah. zap in the microwave. The cat or the crock pot doesn't do too shabby in that one, even if you put the condom in the first, yeah. you know, the big bag. That one's easy, and it's easy to clean. White and case is funny. a southern staple, but it's delicious. Yeah, and, and also, like, like because I guess – I'm not a big, I don't need ribs on Super Bowl Sunday. Like, I'm good with a hot dog on Super Bowl Sunday, but I'm really big into the dips. I want like a buffalo chicken dip, you know, 
Buff like chick dip, dip is a staple for sure. That's a good call. Three does like that's good. I like it. I like where your head's at. And you're exactly right. The mix, like the hodgepodge, where you get like little smokies and a barbecue sauce, you're not honestly going to buy that from a store. But at the same time, I'm not cooking beef ribs and Pit Fiend is, you know, down in Rhino. Yeah. So like it's a perfect marriage in that relationship, you know, like same for Redeemers in that same gauntlet. And then I feel like one thing that is oftentimes overslept that is are over people don't think about as often is a good nacho taco bar where you can add your own accoutrements on top. So like if you have like shredders, you know, sliced tomatoes, a couple of different salsas, and then either just basic veggies like ground beef or, you know, reach out to someone like Jose at uh, La Diabla, get some pastor or something like letting everybody build their own nachos or tacos is always a pretty big winner as well. I hope everyone has a great week and Chris safe travels tomorrow evening. Um, I will probably miss True Detective this coming week, but don't let that exclude us from having a conversation about it Monday because if I had to guess, it's probably gonna be slow as fuck and it, I won't miss shit. And I'm gonna have to wait till episode eight to see any action outside of Jody Foster just getting nailed standing up. You keep going back to that. I mean, it was a great scene. It's probably the most action from the uh, show we've seen this far. I can't far. believe it was him, though. Like, when she knocked on his door and he opened it, I was like, no. <laughs> Ew. I mean, then she, ugh. Gross. She sets her tender to anger. <laughs> like, no, it was uh, Fairbanks. Fairbanks. Yeah. She's, got she's, wide, like, she's got wide range. Like, she is willing to drive on icy roads to get a pardon quick... the pun but she casts a wide net chris yes. and she probably comes home with a little crabs <laughs> <laughs> uh, until next week i hope everyone stays high they stay hungry and they travel safely take good pictures slow burn cheers <laughs>